Welcome in to Teal the Show. I'm Jamal Saints here alongside Frank Frangie. Frank, we could rename the show this week Ankle Watch. Yes, because yes. that's what everybody wants to know. And, and I think everyone wants to know whether Trevor's going to play. I'll, I'll say this. Trevor's try as always, as he always does, Trevor's trying to play in the football game. Now, whether or not he does or not, I guess we'll find out. But Trevor, he doesn't want to miss games. 46 straight starts, never missed one. This is a guy that likes playing. I think Trevor feels like as a leader, there's almost a responsibility to be out there. Now, you don't want to do it in over-risk, right? But I think he's going to try and play. I, we'll, we'll see. whether Maybe between now and with the game, they'll announce something different. But right now, I don't know. You don't know. We don't know. But I think he's going to, if I know Trevor, he's going to get out there if he can. Definitely going to be a balance between the decision for the Jaguars. Trevor Lawrence hurt that ankle on Monday night. A lot of people thought that it was going to be maybe even more serious than it is. It's being called a high ankle sprain yeah. now. He missed some practice time this week, but was back out on the practice field with the team on Thursday and seems to be at least trending in a positive direction. Here's the latest update from Doug Peterson today. I mean, he's feeling good. Um, you know, we'll see. He moved around a little bit yesterday, see how he does today, you know. Um, Kind of, kind of base it on you know uh, medical staff how Trevor feels and uh, um, if he can if he can go or not. Look, there, there's still going to be some uncertainty until kickoff, right. especially with the weather up there in Cleveland. The Jaguars have a tough decision to make. You kind of have to balance. You need a win this week, but is he going to be ready and healthy for the long stretch, not making an injury any worse? Well, the interesting thing about the game beyond Trevor, everything points to a defensive game here. Uh, obviously, the Browns are playing a backup quarterback. Whoever they wind up playing is going to be a backup quarterback. They've been a very good defensive team, one of the best defenses in the league, uh, but they haven't been a very good offense. It's going to rain. So this game has 13-9 to 9 written all over it. It's that kind of game. Make your field goals. Uh, don't do anything bad in the punt game. It's that kind of game. So Trevor certainly matters. He always matters. But I think this is a who wins the line of scrimmage game, Jamal. I really do. The tough guy, the guy that wins the trenches is going to win this football game. This is going to be a tough football game for the Jaguars. I mean, we could basically just do this show as the injury report. Yeah, right. Because for the first time this season, the Jaguars' injury report is a mile long. Trevor Lawrence isn't the only new name that popped up on it this week. Another guy that we're keeping an eye on because we know he's out, Christian Kirk. A huge loss for the Jaguars from a leadership perspective, from an on-the-field perspective, losing Christian Kirk for a number of weeks. He's not going to play this week. That means... They're going to have to turn to a rookie, Parker yeah, Washington, yeah. to play a bigger role on the offense. Yeah, Parker Washington is the only other true slot receiver on the team. He is a slot receiver. He's built kind of like Christian. He plays like, kind of like Christian. He's that same type of player. So he's going to start the game as the slot. But they've got a lot of guys that can move. They can move Zay in there some. They can do some different things. You hit something, though, Jamal. His presence, his leadership. Some guys just have a calming influence about them. Zay Jones has that. And they're calmer when he's on the field. Well, they're calmer when, when Christian's on the field. I also can tell you that offense goes through Christian Kirk and Evan Ingram. It always has. Everything starts with let's get those two guys going, and then you build around that. Well, one of those guys isn't there. So not having Christian Kirk, we haven't talked about it a lot because we've been talking about the Trevor injury. Not having Christian Kirk for a while now, he, not just one game, probably for the end of the regular season, I would guess not having Christian Kirk is a big blow to that football team. There's no doubting that. It's a huge loss. And, you know, we had been talking about it all year long and we talked about it all last year. The Jaguars were such a healthy football yeah, team. Right. They had avoided the injury bug. And it's like that injury bug can sneak up at any time. And it snuck up on Monday night. And the Jaguars injury list this week, mile long. I mean, we could if we sat here and went through play by play, position by position, we'd be here all, all day and we wouldn't have any time to talk about the game because it just got that long so quickly. And it happened, it, a lot happened at the same position. They've now lost two left tackles. If Walker Little doesn't play in this game, they've lost their left tackle, Cam Robinson, and the other left tackle that was going to play, uh, Walker Little. They've lost, they've had, they played a while without Zay Jones. Now they're playing a while without Christian Kirk. Jamal Agnew is still down. So it, it's coming in volume at different spots. Wide receiver, a number of injuries. Left tackle, a number of injuries, plus the suspension to start the season with Cam Robinson. So it's not just one spot, even the running back spot. Uh, right now, we saw that Dearness Johnson is on the on the injury report with a knee. We don't know how severe it is, but he's on the injury report. We know that Travis Etienne's playing with a rib thing. So Jamal, it's not just one or two injuries. They're coming at the same positions, and that's what can be really damaging. A lot of injuries, so a lot of ground to cover. We'll put all the injury news to bed and kind of move on to the football game when Teal the Show returns right after this quick break.
Welcome back here into Teal the Show. All right, we've got to dive into the football game a little bit, Frank. So the Cleveland Browns are a tough-nosed football team, but they have had injuries at their quarterback position as well. So there's a little bit of a question mark on who is going to be under center for them on Sunday. Uh, possibly a guy who the Jaguars have played in primetime on Monday night, their last, uh, if I'm not mistaken, their last win on Monday night football, which... It's sad because I was hoping it was going to be their second to last. But their last win on Monday Night Football is against the Ravens back in 2011. Joe Flacco. Yeah, I don't think he's going to play, though. I think DTR is going to play. Uh, Dorian Thompson-Robinson, I think, will be their quarterback. He's the rookie out of UCLA. Uh, I think he's going to want He was full go. That's who they want to play. Without Deshaun Watson, they want to play DTR. Joe Flacco played pretty well last week. Got off to a good start. Struggled a little bit at the end of that game. But I think you're going to see the rookie. He's athletic. And one of the things you have to concern yourself with is he's going to come out on the, on the back end and run the ball some. So you got to stay home. In today's NFL, quarterbacks who are mobile they add that RPO they add a little bit of that naked look and you can do different things with those guys and that's the concern the concern the Jags have is you don't know which guys playing they play totally differently Flacco is a is a drop back quarterback who can't run out of sight in a week DTR is a guy that doesn't read defenses as well because he's young he just got to the league but he's very athletic I think you're gonna see DTR but it'll be interesting to see how they play that all right now the real question is this Jaguars defense. They played fantastic all season long. We've raved about them here on this show, but on Monday night, maybe their worst game of the season, not to a star quarterback. Right. Is this Jaguars defense going to be able to rebound? I know a lot of the players in the locker room have said they have to play a better football game defensively, yeah. regardless of the injuries on the offensive side of the football, so they've taken that a little bit personally. You think they can rebound? This seems like the perfect week to do it. I think they will. They had a lot of good players who didn't have good games. Uh, uh, Foley Fadakasi didn't have a good game. Devin Lloyd didn't have a good game. Rayshon Jenkins didn't have a good game. Those guys are good players. They've been good players their time here. So I, I think you'll see the ones that do play will bounce back a little bit. I think Devin Lloyd's going to bounce back. I think Rayshon will bounce back. So, but they had a number of guys that I think Jamal didn't. The, the ends had a pretty good game. Josh played pretty well. He always plays well. Trayvon played okay. Uh, I think in the middle of the defense, they didn't play as well as they would like. I think they bounced back. I still think it's a good defensive football team. I've said that all along. They're tough. They're physical. I think the defense, and they have to. This is the defensive game, man. This is going to be, I'm telling you, I, first team to 17 might win this game. I think it's that kind of game. You know, look, the Jaguars are a really good football team when they play their brand of football and they play well. And I'm going to ask you a question here because I know I don't have the answer for it. But it seems like at least this season and maybe even sometimes last season, when it goes wrong, it goes wrong. Uh, when you have really good football players and when one of them seems to not have a good game, it seems like a bunch of them yeah. don't have a good game all at the same time. Think that Texans game earlier yeah. this year where the team just felt flat at every spot and you're like, what's going on? The good guys are not playing like the good guys. Yeah, that uh, happens some. I, I think two or three things, Jamal. Number one, you always hear the phrase complimentary football. Well, when people say complimentary football, they mean the offense has to balance out the defense. They, they have to pick up each other. That's what they mean. Well, complimentary football also happens within a unit. It happens within the defensive side. If the pass rush isn't getting home, the, the defensive backs have to cover better. So complimentary football isn't just offense and defense working together. It's rush and coverage working together. And I think what you're seeing is that. I don't think the front played very well. Devon Hamilton isn't himself yet. He's trying to get back, but I, it's, you know, he was out for a while now. It's, that was a serious thing he went through. He's not back. Foley Fadakasi, I think, is playing a little bit injured. He has not played well. So the, the guys in the interior aren't playing well, so that there's more of a burden on the linebackers. I think that's what's happening is if one group, to your question, because it's a good one, if one group plays poorly, it means the other group has to do more, and maybe they're not capable of doing the more. I think you'll see them all bounce back this week, I do. All right, I think we've reached that time of the show, Frank. Yeah. You think the Jaguars are going to walk out with a win, get back on the right foot? This is a game you pick them to lose. It's rainy. They're, they're hurt. There's no word on Trevor. Uh, Christian Kirk said this is the game to pick them to lose. I think they're going to win. I think they're going to win the game. I, I, it's a game you pick them to lose. I just, my gut tells me uh, I think Cleveland's really struggling offensively. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, somehow the Jags are at their best, Jamal, when people doubt them. This group of Jags, we saw it last year when they were 3-7 and seven and they walked into that press conference after the bye week and said, we know what we've got to do. All our goals are still in front of us. I kind of scoffed at it a little bit. Well, they were right and they did it. They're be they started 1-2 and two this year. Everybody doubted them. They won a bunch in a row. I think, and people are doubting them. They're really doubting them now. I think they're going to win the game. 
just seems like that kind of game that this Jaguars team goes out yes. and wins, doesn't it? Gritty, not pretty. This is yeah. you, when you, you what did you say, thirteen to nine kind yeah, of game. That kind of That's game. a gritty, not pretty yeah. game, isn't it? If you described it, looked it up in the dictionary, thirteen to nine would be right next to it. I'm with you, Frank. I think the Jaguars could walk out a winner in this one. Here's the question. I, you know, when we agree, I got to give you one more. Josh Allen's almost to that single yeah, season yeah. sack record. Do you think this is the week? I do. I think he's going to. I, I think DTR is going to play. I think young quarterbacks don't really haven't really figured out the rush yet. They're they're, they're athletic. They're big arm. But the, all the young quarterbacks in the league haven't figured out yet the rush and where it comes from. Josh is a savvy player. I think he gets that sack. Josh Josh Allen's playing great, by the way. He's he's playing at a great level. He has not had any drop off. Even when everybody else plays badly, he doesn't. I think he gets that sack this week. Putting Josh's name in the record books right. for the Jaguars. And he passed the guy who kind of was his mentor when he first got here, Calais Campbell, to do it. We'll see if Josh Allen can get it done. Jaguars with a big game on Sunday. Frank, thanks for being here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you at home for tuning in. Good night, everybody, and go Jags.